Angular 6.1 just hit NPM. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, I'm going to walk you through the top three things that came out as part of the 6.1 release of the Angular framework and Angular CLI. Let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to be starting with a ng new project. Uh, and if we take a look at the ng version, we're going to see that this project is still on 6.0. So let's start off by updating this project. So I'm going to use the ng update at angular slash core, angular slash CLI command to just get both of those updated to version 6.1. We see that it's updating all the package JSONs, which should be perfect. All right, um, now we have the updated project. It should still serve, and we should see Hello World in the browser here. So we're going to be showing off a couple things today. So the first thing I want to show off is the new view encapsulation. So view encapsulation, if you don't know, is all about how does the Angular um, runtime take your styles and attach it into the component. So if I put a style tag here at the top and I say something like every h1 tag should have a color of red, this style will only apply to this h1 tag right here. It won't apply to any other h1 tags in my application. Um, and that's because we encapsulate the styles and we associate them with the component. The default mode is what's called emulated. So if we jump into our component here, you can add the encapsulation uh, property. And then it's got a few different options. So you access those options with view encapsulation dot. So emulated, as I said, is the default. Um, so that's what uh, we actually recommend using for most people. Um, but if you ever want to, instead of uh, encapsulating it via CSS selectors, which is what we do under the hood, you can actually supply a encapsulation such as uh, native. So what native was, was uh, Shadow DOM V0. Um, and so what we, you would see if you use this was that instead of seeing a nice tree of DOM elements, you're actually going to see this shadow root. And then the styles actually belong inside of that shadow root. Um, and so Shadowdown v1 is not the spec that's going to be supported going forward. And so we've now in 6.1 added another view encapsulation called Shadow Dom. So this is now the Shadow Dom v1 spec. Let's just get both these here so you can see them side by side. And while it looks actually the same from the browser standpoint, it's going to be more performant. It's going to work across more browsers. Um, all of the browsers have worked together to standardize on the Shadow DOM v1 spec. So that's the first feature uh, that was released in 6.1. So the second thing I want to talk about is all related to the router. So let's just cancel this out here. And now let's go ahead and add the router to our application. So we're just going to jump into our app module. And I'm going to import the router module. And we're going to configure it in a second here. Let's go ahead and do the import. All right. And then I'm going to create a couple paths here. So I'm going to say routes equals, we'll say one path is just blank. And it refers to a component called home component. And then we'll make another path here that is called details, and we'll make that go to the details component. All right, so none of those exist yet. Um, so let's go ahead and create those using the CLI. So I'm going to ng generate a component for home, and we'll ng generate a component for details. All right, we have both of those components now. Uh, and what we should see is if we pop the router outlet into our app component now, we should now see home works. And then if we go to slash details, we should see details works. All right, perfect. So this is the normal state of affairs in the router. And there's a new setting that you can actually set on our app module. And so the second parameter that for root takes is a set of extra options. Uh, and so one of these options is called scroll position restoration. Right now uh, it's disabled because this is a new feature. Uh, and then we're going to set this to enabled. So this is going to be the default in the future at some point. And in order to see what this actually does, we need a bit of lorem ipsum text. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste some. Uh, and we're going to put it in both of our home and our details components. 
So hopefully that's enough. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, so we're on the details page. It's got a bunch of content. And then if you go to the home page, it's got a bunch of content here as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add uh, a couple router links to the bottom of these so that you can see what navigation now does. So we're gonna say a router link equals details. And then we'll add one back just for completeness to home. And so what we'll see now is if I go to the bottom of home and I click on details, we're actually going to jump directly to the top of the screen. So we've actually pushed the scroll bar back up, even though both these components had the same height. Uh, and previously, you would have just gone uh, to the bottom of the details component. So uh, on new navigation, we pop you back up to the top. And when you hit back, we're actually going to restore the position um, that the scroll bar was in. And so this is a much better user experience. And that's why we're going to make it default in a future major. One thing to note, though, uh, just if you're getting into this, is if this content is all being generated dynamically, if when the component first renders, it doesn't have any height, you will end up at the top of the component, even if we have uh, scroll position restoration. So uh, if I hit back and there is no content on initial render, I'll jump to the top even if I was supposed to have some sort of position. So just be aware of when and where you are rendering out your position. Now, the last feature that I wanted to show off just a little bit here, we'll replace the details component uh, almost in its entirety, uh, is actually what we, uh, a feature that I've wanted for a very, very long time, so I'm very glad it's here now. Um, and It's called the key value pair, or the key value pipe. And so what the key value pipe does is it, uh, it Historically, you can only iterate over um, arrays, but what KeyValue does is it's a very simple utility pipe that allows you to take uh, a map or an object and then iterate over that. So let's just go ahead and make an object here. So let's say object equals name Steven, title Mr. So you can make this any object that you want, but what's nice now is if we take a look at this, uh, and we can actually pipe this through JSON to see what it's doing under the hood, it's turning all of the key values from that dictionary, from that map, from that object into an array so I can iterate over it. So I can say div ng4 equals let item of object pipe key value. And now I can say, item dot key and item dot value. So this is a very small change, but it's a very welcome one that lets you iterate over objects, uh, which especially if you have any sort of data that's stored in a key value pair, this is really useful. So in general, that's all I wanted to show off on the 6.1 release. It obviously has lots of bug fixes, lots of kind of little improvements under the hood, uh, but these are the top three features that uh, are gonna really affect developers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.